Good morning folks, once again for the second time. I forgot to press record. Good start to the morning. So we've already got the mash in this morning and uh, various tanks in various stages of cleaning. The boil kettle and plate chiller are being sanitised. The fermenter that we're going to use today is having a clean, a proper clean. And uh, Jack is moving all of the items from that corner there, underneath the stairs, uh, to allow us to get in there and hopefully install this steel work. So this is going to be a stainless steel table that we'd like to put in pretty much in the corner of the brew area so that we can keep everything as clean as we can uh, throughout a brew day. So all of this, everything in this corner is coming out basically apart from that fridge. All these tanks and what have you and, the t and this door's being blocked up, that's not used. And then all this section here, across there and across here, is going to be stainless shelving. That's the plan anyway. So while he does that, I'm going to be in here just tidying up the workshop. Uh, let's turn this radio off. So ultimately what I'm wanting to achieve is a replica of the kitchen worktops that they use for catering in restaurants, in hotels, in schools, in breweries, you know, everywhere else. So the steel worktops that I've got came out of a uh, whole university, but we didn't bring the framework with us because they were, well, firmly affixed to the walls. We didn't have the right tools to get it off. And uh, they looked a bit filthy. So for the price of angle, I think what we're going to do is get the, uh, the tops roughly where we want them to be, cut to shape and size, and then I'm hopefully going to build a steel frame, and then underneath the steel frame, they originally had a chipboard, particle board, not MDF, you know what I mean, the particle board, not sterling, but the chipboard stuff. So that seems to be a decent base for this, and wherever there were any joins, they butted the steel up and they'd not welded the joints. Instead, they'd run a series of countersunk uh, flathead screws in stainless to hold it down. So we've got stainless steel screws as well. Posi drive though, I hate, hate flathead. So we'll see if we can make a metal frame and get it all in over the next couple of days at the same time as brewing some beer. Oh, and uh, yeah, I got a Simmons shirt from the uh, trade show last week. We don't really have any of their stuff in, but uh, free t shirt, right? <laughs> Wow, look at the time. It is 20 to 3 and uh, I've been a busy boy. So we've made some steel legs look. Steel, nut, welder, and we can screw these adjustable feet into the bottom to give us the height that we require. And in a moment you'll see why. So, previous clip you saw me cutting that stainless steel sheet and quite frankly it's worked a diamond so the idea behind the stainless steel sheet is of course as you know to make the uh, the table the work table the workbench in the corner in here uh, which is what we've got all set up for 90 percent of the steel is cut into the shapes that would require it and this section here is to hold the uh, the back drip and then we're going to tile off the back drip, if you know what I mean, onto the actual workbench itself. Underneath the workbench, we're going to emulate that mesh shelf with this larger mesh that was given to me by Sharon and Chris at the, uh, at the printers, the guys who did the hat. They were scrapping it and I said I could use it. So we'll utilize this for our shelving, like that. And then in between, I need to make some a-frames, much like these legs here. You see what we've got on these legs? I'm going to copy this 
and we're going to run it around here and then along this wall here to give us a full length shelf apart from that little gappy there that's not a problem though that's not a big problem got the transfer happening so uh, now that's done I thought well I can get cracking with the welding so as soon as we set up the transfer I started the welding and Jack has come back out here in uh, this direction and he is indeed continuing with what he started yesterday to get the last little bit of uh, muck out of the corner so if we carry on at this pace we'll have this wall built by the start of next week I reckon you reckon bud? yeah we'll have that wall built oh yeah man he's nearly done the lot nearly done it all so yeah just that bit there needs leveling is that another foundation? oh it's just a chunk of brick and then just this section over here dude just wants bringing down to same level as what you've dug out the bottom you know the deepest bit and then we'll be done so I need to get a cement mixer on site hopefully by the end of this week fail that early next and we'll start that brickwork if the weather's good we'll do this as well and uh, I've still got to come in here and fix up I'm just going to sell her still Hello. Hello. yeah so we've got the chiller she's uh, she's still exposed so I need to, need to tidy that up a little bit and just make sure all that cable and whatnot's put away but it's working good what we got it set at it's at minus 1.7 and it's holding got a little bit of ice leaking out there solid ice bank in the middle now whereas this one tends not to freeze up as much but I think we've got more more beer running through that one and it's cooling the cask python as well so it's kind of got twice as much work on its hand hands and uh, the acros are working so we're still waiting on the chaps to come and do the floor but there's nothing here for me to be concerned about so it all looks promising everything's moving in the right direction for a change so I better get on with this transfer I get on with this transfer and uh, get the welding finished he's got it alright in here today look at the sunshine buddy I bet you spotted the sunshine didn't you yeah. and thought oh, I'll go and finish that digging bud I've got your number and the garden's starting to come as well beautiful oh, fantastic it really is so before I weld up all these legs these adjustable legs I figured I'd give you the uh, instructions a little bit of a tip on exactly how I've done it so we'll just zoom in this is the last one so we'll zoom in and have a look how it's done right so we've just locked the focus off there and you can see all we've got is basically the nut on the end of this bolt held in place by one tack you see the tack just there so I've kept, I've kept the bolt in but only wound in by two or three turns so I can look down the end and as I'm turning it round I'm able to eyeball it 
to make sure that it's square with the tube and I'm going to go to the opposite side of where we've put that tack and pop another one so we've got one either side, it's strengthened up now this side here is pretty close so we'll tack that and then we've got a big gap on this side so now we've got a tack all the way around I can use this to prop on to hold my hand steady and just start filling in the gap now remember when you're MIG welding if you can jump it you can weld it So I'm on and off with the trigger as well to prevent melt through and allow the weld just a little bit of time to cool in between spurts of wire. Because it's only 3mm wall tube it's easy to melt the tube away. And there we go, that's complete, we'll turn the focus back on. So if you were so inclined, you could kind of uh, tidy this up, this camera's going to struggle to focus on that, you could tidy that up with the flapper wheel if you wanted to, but trust me, end on, which is going to be a difficult shot to grab with the focus here but end on, it's quite a secure and watertight weld. You'll have to take my word for it, I'm not messing about with a camera all day long. But yeah, that'll wind all the way in and all the way out, but I would also advise, when this is cooled off, pop a bit of oil on the thread or on the nut before you wind it all the way in, otherwise it might bind up. Well, Time has ticked on as it usually does, and yet again, thanks darling, we are ready for the off. So, just a quick recap of what we've achieved today, as well as brewing a batch of the vacant gesture. Don't you know, we have also pretty much got 50% of this stainless steel table in. Shabbat. So um, I've ordered the wrong machine screws to fix this down to this central bar. So I'll see if I can pick some of those up either tonight or tomorrow. And the back leg is slightly too high, just there. And then this angle, this piece of wood hits that board that I've put in. So it's kicked it forward and opened my angle up a little bit. But effectively, the angle that I'm looking for here, uh, it was a 100 degree corner because that wall disappears off. So we've cut it at 50 degrees there, but I don't know if you can make it out. There is a little pencil line along here where I need to just cut that and fetch that little bit back. And then that should be that section complete. So we've got welded adjustable feet on the bottom of each one of these uh, as you've seen and then we're going to have the wire rack sitting on this with some angle to hold it in position so all I will do is basically chop 20mm off that back leg and then re-weld the 
um, the foot back on so I don't have to do a new foot I'll just chop it and then chop it and then that should sort that little bit all the rest of it is going in pretty level and then I'm also kind of in two minds as to whether to finish it off to that edge or not I've got the leg for it on this section here as well I just put a bit of flat bar on top with couple of machine screws either side stainless steel machine screws to kind of get the join looking something like I don't want to weld it because the last time I took a welder to something like this flat stainless woof, it moved all over the place so yeah if I put this in it kind of well, I can still reach that shelf so that's not a problem anyone much shorter than me though wouldn't be able to and then of course there's going to be a little shelf here for bits and bats. I think this will make a good little, good little prep area for, for the brewery. So on that note, you can hear everybody moving things and getting ready. Stu's stocking up the cellar. Um, so yeah, I've set the HLT to come on tomorrow morning. We'll do another batch of the vacant gesture. I know you didn't see much brewing footage today. Look at my face, it's covered in soot as well from grinding. And uh, we'll also see if we can get this finished and put to bed. And then it's another project finished. So join me for it tomorrow if you so wish. And I'll see you then. Ooh,